Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to your daily Bible verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Carol McCracken. And after a short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Psalm 139, 7. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. We hope to better equip you to be salt and light for your community. Uh, We hope that we can help you to go out and be a reflection of Jesus Christ to those around you, uh, to your friends and your family, and especially to those that do not know Christ. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Today's Bible verse is Psalm 139.7. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? Welcome to my life. I live in a condo and have two canine companions, Tater and Moses. I also have a prayer partner in another state. In preparation for my weekly prayer partner call, I took Moses to play catch to get some energy expended. Since it was spring, he found many smells to attend to, and he ignored me. He had to spend a little time in his kennel to remind him to listen. I proceeded to my call, and it was a great time discussing answered prayer, taking prayer requests, and checking in on each other. Toward the end of the call, Moses began trying to get my attention in a very annoying manner. We concluded the call, and I jumped up, prepared to walk Moses, assuming he was in need. The front door was open, and Tater, the blind 14-year-old mini pen, was gone. I didn't panic, but was very concerned, and luckily when I stepped out and called Tater's name, he came walking up the sidewalk, panting. I was so relieved. My prayer partner remarked, If it isn't one of your boys, it's the other, when I texted her an update. It's a good thing I love my boys. I wonder if God feels that way about us, his children. Thank goodness he is God and can keep tabs on all of us whether where we are where we should be or not, through His Spirit. Whether we're misbehaving or exploring, He's always there. Whether we're aware He's guiding our footsteps and calling us to Him, we can never escape His presence. He isn't trying to catch us doing something wrong. In fact, He'd prefer we do something right, like follow Him and not fall into sin. But since He knows our hearts, He's there to support and strengthen us as we grow. David, described as a man after God's heart, knew this feeling of never being able to hide from God. David was a shepherd boy when we met him in the Old Testament, an unlikely king. But yet God picked David to be the king of his chosen people, the Israelites. In Psalm 139, which today's verse is taken from, David writes a prayer to God. There's no hiding from God, and David is not threatened or unnerved by this. He's glad and rejoices in it. In his life, David was not perfect by any means. He made mistakes and sometimes some massive ones, including murder and adultery. It seems to me that David would have plenty of occasions to try and hide from God. Yet when he made mistakes and when it was brought to his attention, he always repented. David felt remorse and turned away from his sins and he could not bear to grieve his God. David grows to find comfort and peace that God sees David wherever he goes. God is divinely omnipresent. He's always there and not limited by space and time. Can you even wrap your head around that? 
Sometimes David and his humanness was spiritually blind and wandered where he shouldn't, just like my little blind dog. So David knew what it was like to be in figurative and literal darkness. David made some bad decisions in his life, just like you and me. That's why David is one of my favorite people in the Bible. It's very easy to over-spiritualize him because he was such a great king to God's chosen people. But David coveted what wasn't his. He desired a married woman and had her husband killed to get him out of the way. Perhaps he believed his own press, so to speak. Since he was king, he was entitled to whatever he wanted, right? But I suspect that God could compare that to making a decision that wasn't healthy. David was running from freedom in God to slavery of sin, just as blind Tater was running out the door of my condo, no longer protected. Neither can see which way to go, but thank God, God could. I'm certainly not comparing a human king to a blind dog in anything but theory, but you get where I'm going. So it's easy to lose your way when you're on your own. We've all done it. We've all been the victim of wrong thinking. It's simply the way of the world as we live in it. We want what we want, even when it isn't good for us at times. But no matter what we do, God is there. And we can choose whether it's a comfort or not. Until we realize the absolute freedom in doing just that, we'll never know how really good it feels to live in the light of his presence. Darkness hides. Darkness traps. But God is good and God is light, and he loves us beyond measure. No matter what we've done, no matter who we've been, our Heavenly Father is always keeping tabs on us. Know you are loved. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, Sometimes it's hard to get our head around the fact that you are always there. You are always with us. It's easy to get caught up in our day-to-day or that big pressing problem that we can't escape. And Lord, you remind us that even if we sin, even if we grieve you, we can always turn back to you because you are there. Help us to recognize your presence is something that's comfortable. You're not trying to find us in the act of doing something wrong because you created us and you know us and you know none of us can escape sin. And yet you forgive us. And yet you love us. And we can't even imagine that depth of love. Lord, help us this week to truly recognize how much you love us and how much you love being in our presence. Help us to equally love being in yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hello, my name is Adam Comer. And I'm Ryan Chittister. And we're the host of Life After Addiction Podcast. If you or someone you love struggles with addiction, check us out, Life After Addiction Podcast, and you can subscribe at lifeaudio.com.